All right, thanks for tuning in. This is Thopper Be Thoppin', and this video is gonna be just a quick walkthrough about how I added solar to this Costco gazebo. This is the Yardistry model, and it's their 12 by 14 offering. So we just put this up the spring, and I wanted to add solar so that I could charge my Anchor Solix C1000 solar generator unit and some other solar generators that I have around the house. So initially at first, I was really concerned about how many panels I could fit because the Amazon specs for the dimensions for these panels can just be a little bit wonky. Like the dimensions for these two were much bigger than they actually are in real life. So we'll do a close up. I'll have links in the description below for all the different products I have. And I'll walk you through the steps of how I did this very simple solar setup for a gazebo, 400 watts. So one of the first things you'll have to consider is what size panels, how much wattage, and uh, how many of them that you wanna add. So obviously you've got limited real estate up top. That's gonna limit how many panels you're gonna be able to put, whether they are the smaller 100 watt, 200 watt, or even the 400 watt panels. And then obviously also underneath how you're going to secure them. So they just have simple self-tapping screws. And I added in these extra two by fours, you can see, to help secure them into the actual roofing material. So measure three times, you know, cut once, do all that. And uh, then you can go ahead and pick your panels and how much wattage you want to achieve. Again, I have two 200 watt Renogy panels. So here are my two 200 watt Renogy panels. Uh, you know, don't forgive the lens here, it's a little bit of a bird's eye. But here's the Renogy label, kind of some serial numbers, and uh, some of the mounting brackets. Those came separate. I'll link these two panels below, but I just wanted to show that yes, you can very easily fit two 200 watt. Renogy panels. Not every 200 watt panel are the come in the same dimensions. Some are skinnier and oh, holy bird fight. It's spring. We got nests and these birds are going, going crazy. But yeah, some of them are slimmer and uh, a little bit longer. Some of them are a little bit more square than, than others. So choose your panels carefully. Also consider the voltage. These are 24 volts each and I've got them wired in parallel so that'll uh, increase the voltage but not the amperage. I think the amperage for these comes out to about like eight and a half amps whatever the calculation is so yeah link to the description below for these panels I got on Amazon. So when it came time to actually mounting the panels again I, I measured many times before I actually drilled anything and you can see here where I added in these boards. So I placed the panels up on top of the roof and I took a little metal hole punch and I kind of just gently tapped through the openings for the brackets. So then when I came underneath here, I could see the light shining through and I knew exactly where to put my two by four boards. So then I installed these two by four boards with simple screws and then I went back to the rooftop. So again, these Renogy panels, uh, Amazon recommended these Renogy branded brackets and of course they work perfectly. They come with these little self-tapping screws that uh, have the, uh, that kind of like polyurethane uh, seal washer. So when you cinch them down, they can be a little bit more waterproof. However, I wanted to take an extra step and uh, put in this is not butyl tape or butyl tape, whatever that stuff is called. Very common in the RV industry. It's like essentially like self-healing, waterproof, thick, sticky tape. You can put that underneath here and then you can drill down into those two by fours. What I used instead here is an offering by uh, Gorilla, like Gorilla Glue, that company. So this is their waterproof, extremely adhesive tape. So I just used that, I put it directly on the aluminum rooftop and then just drilled right into those two by fours underneath. And so far we've had several rainstorms and there hasn't been a single issue with water getting through any of these. So a lot of panels are gonna come with these short wires which end right here where my hand is. That's not really gonna help you get a connection down near the ground where you wanna use it to be able to charge up any of your devices or anything. So. In order to do parallel, I got these two to one connectors off Amazon. I'll put a link to those. These are just 
cheap by some no-name company, it doesn't matter, and I am going to tidy all this up in a little bit. And then I also got this additional extension cable. This is what I am running. Forgive me as I climb down the ladder here. This is what I am running up through the corner and uh, just kind of around these brackets. Maybe you can see the black wiring there. I put it right through and I'm running it all the way to the corner where I have it kind of tucked up here coming down to our next unit. This is a very simple isolator, basically an on off switch. So right now it's in the on position. Uh, they're essentially waterproof, like I forget, IP65, 7, something like that. A ton of different companies make them. They're dirt cheap. It's just a simple way to where you can actually disengage power. So the power will be always hot, always on, assuming you have sun and you're drawing power from solar. And this is where you can actually turn the power off. So you can let these leads kind of dangle. I have them set up to my uh, XT60 connector charging the, Sol the uh, Anchor Solix C1000 right now. <clears throat> so we just got power in, just turn it back on. 48 watts, climbing, 82 watts, 118. Let's see what, it's a, it's a very hazy day, so it's deceivingly not that sunny out. 192, 220, 255 and climbing. So earlier today it was up around like 290. Yeah, there we go, 290 watts, that's pretty good. And that's where it peaked out. So 290 watts is what we're getting out of those 400 watts right now. So yeah, again, I'll have a link to all these little components in the description below. And that's just a super simple way you can have on off solar power on your patio or your gazebo or your whatever. Thanks for watching everyone.